I'm Tiffany Smith, and I am so excited to be here at New York Comic Con with all of you guys here celebrating together. Netflix presents Wednesday panel. Woo! <laughs> I gotta say, you know you're at a Comic Con when a panel starts with a Tim Burton clip with a dinosaur in it, right? Right? <laughs> Now, I know we're all here to celebrate everything amazing here at Comic-Con, and I could talk all about this show, but I think that you guys are here to see some of the amazing panelists that we brought here to talk about and celebrate Wednesday. Does that sound good? Are you guys ready to bring them out here? Yeah? <laughs> okay, so first up, please give a huge welcome to the star of the show, our Wednesday Adams, Jenna Ortega. <laughs> We are keeping it all in the family, you know, our favorite gothic father. Please welcome Gomez Adams, Luis Guzman. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! I love the energy in here. And next up, it's a brand new character. Are you guys ready to meet her? Yeah? Okay, please welcome a very mysterious character at Nevermore Academy, Gwendolyn Christie as Principal Larissa Weems. Finally, please welcome to the stage our showrunners, writers, and executive producers. I just want to call them, you know, the headmasters of this show. <laughs> please welcome to the stage Al Goff and Miles Millar here. Come on! All right, have a seat, everybody. Give them a warm New York Comic Con welcome, everybody. How does it feel for all of you guys to get to be here and finally share a little bit more of Wednesday with all these fans here? It's very exciting. I've never, I've never done a panel or a Comic Con before, so I'm, it's really wonderful to see everyone's passion. It's very exciting. Thank you for having us. This is your very first Comic Con. Correct. Oh my gosh, you guys. You got to show her the best Comic-Con energy there is out there. <laughs> what is it like for you, Luis? Well, this is my first time, too. Woo! <laughs> and uh, I'm just proud that I'm doing this right here in my hometown. Gwendolyn, if you say that it's your first time at a Comic-Con, I'm not going to believe you. <laughs> this is my first time at New York Comic-Con. Is that really? Wait, is it really? Yeah, it is. Oh, my God. And you all look so beautiful. Thank you for coming. How about for you guys, how is it to be here at Comic-Con? We, we've been to New York Comic-Con before, and it's always fantastic, and it's really exciting for us to be back here. Well, I have to say that I was lucky enough to get to see a little bit of the show. And Jenna, you absolutely nail this role. It's so much fun to watch. Can you talk a little bit about what went into deciding you were going to play this character? She's such an iconic character. And is there anything that you do to really like get into that Wednesday headspace? <laughs> thank you very much. That's very, very sweet. Thank you. Um, and thank you for, for saying that. I really appreciate it. You know, you never know. I don't think I've ever played a character that's been done before. Before, um, so it was, it was yeah, it was an interesting uh, balance. And we've also never seen her as a teenager, which was a which was a cool little endeavor as well. Um, I, you know, it, it came around very lightheartedly. I had maybe a, a 10, 20 minute conversation with Tim. I read a couple scenes for him, and you know, it's an honor to be approached by someone of, with a resume and and platform that, that he does in a legacy. 
So I felt um, very, very lucky. And also, I can't think of many iconic characters or, or characters that have reached as wide of an audience as Wednesday, who's also Latin. So anytime that you have that sort of opportunity to uh, to do something like that, it's it's a it's a great honor and it's something that I I, I jump on. I love that. And you know, we got to see the clip at the beginning with Tim in there and talking about him approaching you for this role. How did Tim come into this project? How did that end up happening for you guys? We had written the script, the first episode, and Tim was always at the top of our list. And people were like, Tim Burton's never going to do this. He doesn't do television. And we're like, well, if we don't ask, the answer's no. And it was during lockdown, and we sent the script. And four days later, the universe answered. And his agent called and said, Tim loved the script. He felt like he would have dated Wednesday Adams in high school. It really <laughs> spoke to him. And so he said he'd really love to get on, you know, get on a Zoom or a call and talk to you guys. And we're like, great. How do we set that up? Does his assistant? He goes, no, I'm going to send you Tim's phone number, and you're going to FaceTime with him tomorrow morning. Because <laughs> he's in London and we were in LA. And so we FaceTime with Tim, and he's at his house with these huge dinosaur topiaries behind him. So it's very on brand for Tim. <laughs> and um, he loved the script and, and really loved the idea of doing long form storytelling. Um, and so he was very excited to, to jump in and do this and he's been an amazing collaborator. So it, it's been great. Do you have anything they wanna add? No, I think that's right. <laughs> I, think, I think it's what it is. The show encapsulates all the best things about Tim Burton's movies. So it's funny, it's gothic, it's macabre, it's spooky, it's scary, it's a little bit of horror as well. And I think it really, the character of Wednesday spoke so fully to Tim, and it's someone he's always loved, that this is really for him a dream come true, to get to, to, to see Wednesday's story and bring it to life. I was really waiting for you to say creepy and kooky. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I feel like those jokes and the snapping and everything happened so much probably with you guys on set that you're like, we don't even think about it anymore. <laughs> Singing the song, it's just in my head all the time. Um, what was it like for you guys working on a project that Tim was involved in? Did you have any moments where, you know, you just really felt like, yes, I crushed that moment, or where you were on set and you were like, yep, this is, I can see the Tim Burtonness in here, please. Well, uh, I was in Cardiff, Wales shooting a movie, and it says, um, I got a message, uh, Tim Burton wants to talk to you. Oh, well, Tim who? <laughs> Tim Burton. Okay, okay, yeah, have him call me. So, I call my guy back, uh, wait, wait, you mean the guy from the Batman movies, that guy? <laughs> yeah, the, oh yeah, I want to talk to him too. So, uh, we, we uh, did the Zoom meeting, and this guy comes on, and it's like, wow, it's really Tim Burton. And he was telling me about this project, and he says, I would love for you to be my Gomez. And I told him, I'd love for you to be my Tim. <laughs> so they sent me the script. I read it. I was blown away by it. I was tickled pink, you know, come on, man. I grew up watching The Addams Family, you know? I saw, I saw Raul Julia do it, you know what I mean? And I called him back, absolutely, bro. When do we start? And, you know, listen, I, I, I've been doing this for a long time. You guys know that. And so, and it was the first time in my career that I, I was kind of, doing something that was done already and man tim burton and then i got the opportunity to meet jenna ortega you know <laughs> and then i didn't even know that catherine zeta jones was going to be my morticia <laughs> so i'm pretty badass <laughs> <laughs> and then seeing this woman this incredible actor work her craft and come on and my writer so i did say yes and here we are um, just from hearing him kind of talk about the dynamic on set 
Gwendolyn, what was it like for you, the Tim Burton aspect, but then also getting to work with everybody up here? Because you guys, just seeing you backstage, like hugging and seeing each other, there's such a sweetness between all of you guys, which is really nice. It was um, just a, a surreal experience. I've, I've wanted to work with Tim Burton my entire life. I, I think I saw Pee-wee's Big Adventure when I was seven years old. And for there to be this filmmaker that created films about the outsider, someone that I felt I could really connect to, that understood me, and his work means so much to so many people. It was a huge honor when I was walking across a field and got a text saying, Tim Burton wants to speak to you. Um, I, I mean, it's utterly surreal. And then, you know, you, you do a Zoom. I was bright red. I was really, so, and I actually- That's when I you just, gotta use that like face touch up feature. Oh, I know, I need the thing with the filters where I look like I'm in a Caribbean island or something. I need, I don't have that. I need I'm that. really sunburned. But it was such a pleasure to go into this with such committed actors and also to be able to come to the Adams Family, which is something I've loved my entire life. That to me on television when I watched it and all the films seemed like a more realistic uh, representation of families and the world than more kind of mainstream cookie cutter things that I watch. <laughs> But the opportunity to create a new character with these brilliant writers and our brilliant, brilliant actors, people like Luis Guzman I've dreamt of working with, Jenna, who it was just such an unadulterated pleasure to work with every day, and to work with Tim, who truly recognizes you as a person. He sees you, and he liberates you, and he is willing to collaborate with you. And the beauty and freedom of that, I believe, is all over the screen in this show. Well, we are here at Comic-Con, and I feel like it's not Comic-Con unless we have some cool stuff to share with you guys. I feel like, Jenna, maybe there's a little something you want to just yeah. share with the audience here? I'm, I'm actually very excited. I just saw this for the first time myself a couple of hours ago. And, uh, you know, we worked really, really hard on this show, spent eight months in Romania away from our families, really trying to create something that did Wednesday Adams justice and, and also created a new world and introduced her to a newer generation while also welcoming back um, other people that have fallen in love with her from previous generations. So um, I think we're about to show you the trailer right now which is really exciting for me, and I hope you enjoy. That is a Comic-Con trailer, woo! Um, I know there's been a lot of rumors, a lot of rumbling about, you know, if Uncle Fester was gonna be in the trailer, in the show. Did you guys see that clip? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> um, I think that we have a spare chair out here. How would you guys feel if we brought out Uncle Fester? Yeah? Please welcome to the stage Fred Armisen. Hi, hello, hey New York. Hello. All right, nice to see you. What a surprise, I had no idea. <laughs> You're as surprised as everybody here. I can't believe it. <laughs> I have to ask, Uncle Fester is such an iconic character. Talk a little bit about what about this character made you say, yeah, I want to come on board for this. And bigger question, did you actually shave your head? I did. I shaved my head. Because uh, this was like a role I, as soon as I heard about it, I was like, oh, I got to be Fester. I really wanted to do it. And um, I, yeah, I wanted to do it right and not like have like a bald cap or anything. So I just shaved my head. And I was proud to do it. And tonight... I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> I didn't know. We're all gonna do it. Um, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, but it was, you know, I, I loved it. I loved every second of it. We, we got to shoot in Romania. And uh, I just, you know, I really wanted it to be a little bit like the uh, original TV show a little bit too. I like that, the vibe of that, the way that that role was. Um, but yeah, it's a tradition. I think Fester is a tradition of, of this, of the Adams Family. Yeah. Woo! 
And they kind of jumped in a little bit to the history with the Adams Family for them. What was your first or your most vivid memory of the original show? Um, I know it's you know it seems like partial that I would talk about this, but it really was that light bulb with that Fester had. I that oh, to me always like just pops out. But I loved you know I just loved that it was like it was scary and funny at the same time. I love that mix. I really do. Nice to see everybody. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, and speaking of iconic looks. Um, Gomez has a very specific look. Luis, can you talk a little bit about getting the look for this version, the look that you went for? She has to translate. Oh, well, that, yeah, well, that had to be. <laughs> you know, the hair and the mustache bit. Mm -hmm. uh, well, um, I, they made a wig for me because my, my, my hair just wasn't right. And um, I love my hair. <laughs> and I had the most incredible makeup artist, Susan, and every day I showed up, man, she put on this wig, did the mustache bit in 20 minutes. And I look in the mirror and I said, I love you, papi, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was Gomez ready. <laughs> was the look and the mustache what really helped with the chemistry with your Morticia? <laughs> The, the, my chemistry with Morticia, Catherine. Oh wow! Yeah, listen, I had the most beautiful. I have the most beautiful wife as Gomez, and um, uh, it was great working with Catherine. She uh, she's beautiful, and I got to kiss her at the end of all the takes. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? She was very giving. She was spot on. She was a pro. She knew how to work the camera. I've been doing this a long time. She still taught me tricks about the camera. And it was an honor to work with her, to, to be in love with Morticia, you know, because that's what Gomez is all about. He's about the love and he's about the passion. And uh, that came very easy for me, you know? <laughs> Um, Gwendolyn mentioned this, the, just the fact that, you know, the family dynamic in the Adams family, it may be a little bit different than some other families, but there is so much love there. Um, how much fun was that for you to kind of play off of that mother-father figures that are just so sometimes grossly in love to a teenager? <laughs> well, it was, I think, having gone through the teenage experience myself, incredibly informative. And I think, I think any teenager can relate sort of to the um, wanting to create an identity outside of your family or kind of being thrown out into the world for the first time on your own and wanting to be in independent. And, you know, a character like Wednesday, who has always been so bold and so confident in herself and has never really had a question, for her to be thrown into an environment like Nevermore, which Morticia and Gomez reigned as, you know, they had their education there and, and created quite the legacy. It's it's really frustrating or obnoxious to be stuck in the shadow of, of that sort of thing or, or not have an identity outside of your own. And for Wednesday, who's never needed to explain, her, er, explain herself and never, um, I don't know, has, has never been thrown into a, a situation full of outcasts, you know, it's, it's interesting. She's still an outcast in a sea of outcasts. But I think working on the family dynamic, a family that has been so loving and has, like Gwendolyn said earlier, so much more accurate than the typical cookie cutter family. There's also the part where the teenage girl would like to rebel a little bit and, and push a little bit. And the relationship between Morticia and Wednesday in this series is definitely one of the most pivotal ones of this first season. And it was delightful to work on that with Catherine. And it, it was wonderful to receive affection from you, as it always is. And, and I, I, um, it, it was really, really fun. And then also to have grown up with the Adams family and, and seen that and grown up watching that, it's, it's really wonderful to experience it in real time and kind of create your own version of it with people that are very, very talented. I, I feel very lucky. Also, I just, I just like to say that if I could have graduated from Nevermore, you know she was gonna graduate. <laughs> Um, I have to ask you, because this is really the first time we're getting to see, obviously, her in this high school teenage age. What was it about that period, um, Miles and Al, that made you guys say, yeah, this is the story we want to tell? 
well, we have teenage girls. Yes. So <laughs> four between us, and that definitely inspired us to write this show. And I think what's amazing about Wednesday, she's an iconic character for many reasons, but she is someone who is fully formed and incredibly confident, as Jenna said. And she's weird, she is really smart, she plays instruments, she reads books, she's very knowledgeable, and she's fearless. And she's unapologetic about all those things. And in this world, it feels like that's a great character for everybody to aspire to. And she is not afraid to say what she thinks. And that we live in an age where people are, writers in particular, are self-censoring. You're told what you can and cannot write. And that, the idea that Wednesday is told what to do, is, that's anathema to her. She will reject that. She says exactly what she thinks. And I think she's such a great role model for not only girls, but for everybody that have that strength. Well, and I think it's for people of every age, because I think you can always, it, that reminder is always helpful to be like, be confident in who you are. Yeah. You don't need to change to fit into any mold. And that's definitely, when I watched it, I was like, yeah, yeah, Tiffany, be who you are and embrace that and stay in it. And so I think that when your daughters watch it, they're going to feel that way too. Yeah. Well, it, you know, a lot of times in these stories, it's about the timid girl who comes into a situation and then blossoms. And the great thing about this show is Wednesday knows exactly who she is. She sees the world in black and white and she has an arc, but it's a very, very tiny arc, but it's, but it's still there and it's still impactful. But it was just fun to write a character like that in this story. And obviously you're playing with characters that we know, but you're bringing in new characters as well. So Gwendolyn, what can you tell us about your principal character? Um, I play Larissa Weems. Larissa Weems is the principal of the Nevermore Academy. Um, so essentially I play a, a headmistress at a school for outcasts, which many people have said I have been typecast in this role. <laughs> um, but Larissa went to Nevermore. Her roommate was Morticia, and Morticia was always brilliant at everything. She superseded all expectations, she excelled at everything, and Larissa was always in her shadow, and always struggling to even be second best. Now, Larissa has achieved her dreams of being in charge of the school. She has to deal with not only the bureaucracy as a woman in power of trying to navigate that, but the arrival of Wednesday Adams. And Wednesday presents a, a strange and discombobulating dynamic between the two women. And that's what I loved so much about this role, is that you have an older, unconventional woman in a position of power, greeted with this revolutionary dynamic, and all sorts of strange things come out of that relationship. I love that. How much? <laughs> it is, it's wonderful to get to see so many strong, interesting female characters in one project. How much fun is it for you guys to, like I said, play with the toys that are already in the world of the Adams Family and then add in new flavors, new characters, new story to it. it? It was a lot of fun, you know, and it was interesting because, you know, you'd only really seen these characters either as panels in the New Yorker cartoon or the movies. And I think with this long form storytelling is you can sort of delve into the family more and you see like they do have problems and they do have dynamics and putting Wednesday, you know, you've only really seen her as like a 10 year old who has the snarky line at the end of the scene. And now to put her in the center, and as Jenna said, it's how she's dealing with her parents and breaking away from them. And then when you go away to boarding school, or you go away to college, it's a time when young people build a new kind of family. So it's still an Adams family, it's just a bigger family. It was also very important to Tim that it was not just a remake, that it was, yeah. a, that it was a, new, a new iteration of, of the Adams family. So introducing Larissa Weems, but then also honoring the, the legacy of the Adams family, which is so great with Uncle Festa and this finding, you know, incredible talent to play those roles, you know. So that's, it's really important to, that the show feels like an Adams fan, the next iteration of that, that feels like it's, it's honoring the past while still making something different and new. So it's not like a, I mean, Tim was very clear, it was, it's not a remake. It's, it's an eight hour Tim Burton movie, which is what, it, what was the ambition of the show. It's not a TV show, it's really an eight hour Tim Burton movie, which is what he wanted to do. And, but it's something that will, it's like the next chapter of the Adams Family. 
Um, what was that experience like for you, Fred, coming into knowing they're saying it's an eight-hour movie. We're not doing a feature. We're not doing episodic, really. It's a whole story and getting to know this family and getting to dive in and explore it even more. I mean, that part is... That's what, what's easy. That's the fun thing is like because the sets and everything looks so great and the costumes and all the actors are so great that I don't even think about you know, if it's episodic or a movie. I would just, just rather be in the scene and just make the scene work, you know. Um, as an aside, I just wanted to tell really quickly, my, when I got to meet Tim Burton, I was so surprised. At, I don't know if you guys experienced this, at how low his voice is. <laughs> because I thought like he'd have like this higher like wispy voice, but when I talk to him, he's like down here. You know, I can't. I don't know. I even know what's in the fridge. It's like this lower. Yeah. By the way, he's from Burbank, not Brooklyn. <laughs> no, but he, but he's got like the vibe of a New Yorker. Also, I like the sentence that you went to is, I don't know what's in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I was asking about something. I don't even know what's in the fridge. <laughs> Yeah, he's a homeboy, <laughs> a homie. Did he, did he did you get that vibe from him when you got on the Zoom? Yeah, definitely. He's a, he's a, he's a man of few words, and it's nice because he it you, it is you kind of have to lean in a little bit because he does mumble a bit under his breath, and you notice he's got a he's got a habit of pacing and things like that on set, and he's very vocal. It, it, it's one of the joys about working with him, honestly, because he's so authentic in his reaction always that if he's unhappy with something you know and when he's excited about something that he's watching on the monitor he's reacting like a child and clapping his hands it's the most endearing sweet reaction ever but yeah he, d he will pace and he will talk to himself and he just goes like i didn't even lose his head like that. Whole, he's, he's very much in his own head which i admire is that intimidating in some ways where it's like there is such an iconic what a tim burton project looks like and then coming onto set, and I know you were saying, you know, the sets are kind of do a lot for you, but when you're there, is that intimidating being like, especially where you were saying, you know, you watch the movies, you grew up with them. I think that, like, what's extraordinary is that there is all of that expectation, but because Tim is so collaborative, and I never expected that, yes, yes. to someone to say, what do you think, and what do you want, is an amazing opportunity. And he's a calm, gentle person, Everybody was so collaborative and, and kind, and, and we all share the, the enthusiasm of the Adams family and, and the opportunity to create something, this is what I think could be in that world, that comes from such a place of love and research and passion, that it was so, it was like play. All of us together on the sets, I was so overwhelmed by that. There was such a feeling of play about it. I love that. Um, and I think too, it's, you know, saying that the sets are so iconic and the costumes and everyone getting on set, what was that like for your, you guys, Miles and Al, when you were on set and seeing everyone in the costumes on the set? It was incredible. I mean, it really was, because you know we've been watching Tim Burton movies for 35 years, and then now you're involved with him, and as they've all said, he's incredibly collaborative. And you know he's, he's an amazing filmmaker. I know that's not news. But he, he really is. And just for us, it was like going to film school, you know, to, have, to be able to be there and watch his process and be involved with it. And then him turning to us and then saying, you know, how do, how do we want to solve this problem or that problem? He's an amazing editor, you know. And, and to be honest, he got us this amazing cast. I mean, these, everybody here is an A+. Plus. I mean, this is the, we could not be more thrilled with the show and with everybody in it, it's been fantastic. It's, it's always about it's always about casting, and Tim's instinct for casting is in, impeccable. Impact. So I think that's for us. We've learned a lot in this process, and we've been doing this a long time. But you you learn a lot in each different project you do, and this one we I think we've learned the most. Yeah, it's only been a long project. It's like this is our <laughs> heading to our fourth year. Yeah. So, Crazy. Yeah. Well, I know it's Comic Con, and. I know that people are watching online. The trailer is online for everybody to watch as well, but I think we have something special just for everyone here in this room at New York Comic Con. Does that sound like something you guys would like to see? <laughs> we have got a very special clip with Fester and Wednesday. Check it out. You guys are the only ones who got to see that, just so you know. How cool is that? <laughs>
getting to see it all come together, I mean, I'm sure you guys all have seen clips and things, but what is that like for you, Jenna, getting to see those clips with an audience here? It's a bit strange, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, I never n really know how to react during that certain thing. And that was something that I, I, I yeah, I also was watching in real time. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting, but it's also very nerve-wracking. I understand how, how beloved this franchise is and, and how much people uh, appreciate it. And I know because I'm a, I'm a part of that community, and, and I always have been. I've, I've loved the Adams Family since I was, I think the first time I saw them, I was around eight or nine, and I instantly resonated with them and connected with them as most people do. And I think that um, when, when people have that nostalgic factor coming into play or they've, they've already seen a version of this family, they have an expectation that comes with that, and, and I think, I, I would just like, I hope that people realize how much care and respect went into this, and, and how much I, I would like to protect this character and this family, and, and we try, but it's also different. It's not gonna be something that you've seen before. It is its own world, it's its, its own different reality, and um, it, it's very special and, and very odd, and I, <laughs> I think, I, I hope that that people are able to run with that and, and lose themselves in that and appreciate it for the isolated project that it is. And you kind of touched on something that I think is really cool because yes, a lot of people may have grown up with the Addams Family and know the show and you know, know these characters, but this is also something where it's reintroducing it to fans who are already there and finally introducing it to people that may not have any connection to this family at all. So what does that feel like for each of you guys, getting to introduce this world to new fans? <laughs> it feels kooky. <laughs> kooky. Um, no, what an honor. What an honor. It's so much, again, it's like I, I never anticipated this opportunity ever coming. And, and even to this day, to be here, it, uh, I mean, it, 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 we're, we're still working on the show a little bit. You know, there, there's still so much to, it's a lot. We want to get it as right as possible for you guys. But it is uh, and a really incredible experience. And, and I, I'm, I'm very privileged and very lucky to have been a part. And, and again, to work with such an outstanding group of individuals that I feel I learned a lot from this project. And I was able to take a lot from this project. And it's unlike anything that I've ever done before. And uh, yes, it's very nerve wracking, but it's also a pretty a pretty cool thing to say that I was a part of. Thank you. Yeah, I'll say um, for me it's very humbling. Um, like I said, I watched The Adams Family as a kid and I've been an actor for many years. I've done so many things and this came across my path and it was like, wow, really? You know, it's 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 this is what dreams are made of, you know? This is, this is like why you want to go to work every day, because like, wow, I'm, I'm stepping into something that was part of my life as a kid, and here I am doing this and honoring, again, the people that have played it before. And what I really loved about doing this too, that it wasn't about trying to be funny, you know? It wasn't about it wasn't about slapstick comedy. It was about honoring the writing, which in itself was so creative. You know, when I call her my little thundercloud, you know, who, what parent would call that child a thundercloud? Gomez. <laughs> you know, I mean, just those little those little words, those little lines, and to be able to just give them a life, because again. When I spoke to Tim Burton, you know, Tim, Tim said, look, man, I'm not looking for you to be funny. You know, we're gonna let that all happen naturally in the words, in, in, in the set design, in your outfit. I had to wear these funky teeth, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I had to talk, learn to talk through them and sing. <laughs> yes, I sing. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, and 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 like I said, just all these little different challenges that were so welcoming. And like I said, and just stepping into those clothes, stepping into that wig, you know, seeing this young woman here portray Wednesday how she did. 
She used to scare me. <laughs> I said, this is my daughter. I'm scared of her. Because she was so spot on. She, you know, she just, her, her flow, her chemistry that she brought to Wednesday is like, I, I've never seen it before like that. And that's, to me, what makes this so unique. Yeah, I'll take twenty dollars later. Yeah, I paid him. <laughs> you know, but and, and 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 like I said, man, you know, just Tim Burton, you know, we all seen so many of his movies and just to be a part of his universe, you know? And uh he was just a really cool cat to work with, you know. Like I said, I'm I'm just humbled by the whole thing and I'm telling you guys right now. I'm pinching myself sitting up here. And just knowing also that that's my brother, oh my God. you don't want to mess with that. We play brothers, hermanos. Hermanos, papá. Sí, claro que sí. What is it, uh, what's it like for you, Fred, getting to introduce this family and this world to new fans? Well, I, I agree with Jenna about wanting to respect the tra tradition of it, of the movies, every iteration of it. And... I'm also discovering, I, of course I've seen it all and I've watched it, but I want to see this version. I want to experience it. The other thing is, you know, I've always loved the music of Danny Elfman and to, yeah, I, unbelievable. And it, it just occurred to me watching the clip that to be doing something, you know, it, while the, his score is underneath it, is just mind blowing. It's just incredible. Um, so, yeah. Not, not only him, I mean, we were talking about Look before, Colleen Atwood is a Hollywood legend. Agreed. And her impact upon cinema, uh, Tim, Tim's look isn't the same without her. She's the kind of woman who will take, will look at a coat, add three buttons, and somehow it's 10 times better than it initially was. It's, it's witchcraft. And to watch that in real, <laughs> real time is insane to witness. And I mean, everything that she did in terms of establishing look and making everything different and but they, her and Tim have such a great par partnership. I remember doing the fitting for the job and, and he would kind of whisper in her ear and she would kind of fake it a little bit. And then she would say, okay, this is what we're doing. She is one of the most impressive women I've ever met or worked with in my entire life. So again, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's the entire environment and atmosphere that they create. And as people that who have, people who have collaborated together for such a long time, to be a part of something that they were a part of is, is an immense honor, but then also, Watching it is is um, is a real treat. Well, I already I was walking around and I saw a couple Wednesday Adams already. The show version cosplayers. Do we have any? Is anybody in here cosplayed as her already? Got a couple of them already. House lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How does that feel for you guys, knowing that you know once this show goes out, there are going to be so many cosplayers of each of your characters, and for you guys, new characters that you created on the show. You know, it's always incredibly humbling, you know, to, to, you know, to have fans like you come out to things like this and love the shows. And it's frankly why we get to keep doing it and why we do it and why we all love to be a part of this industry. It'd be funny if they dressed up as you guys, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they just, just mem remember what they're wearing right remember, now. <laughs> remember this. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> Halloween. <laughs> I have to ask, too, because just hearing about the show and all the different layers where it is this family show, but it is spooky, and there is humor to it, but that's not all there is to it. How do you guys strike that balance that works so well um, and comes across so well on screen? Yeah, it's definitely a process, and it's not something we ever articulate. We just write it, and then it comes out. It's, it's a weird, and, and this one is definitely, it sort of walks a, a tonal balancing, like a tightrope, doesn't it, really, in terms yeah. of the, the tone, because it's a lot of things. It's funny. It's scary, it's spooky, it's emotional. Um, but, but it's an idea that came to us pretty quickly. Oh yeah. It, it came to us, that part actually, you know, I guess it was like three and a half years ago, just the idea of Wednesday Adams in boarding school. And then it was, you know, tracking down who actually controlled the, the rights to it and all of that. That was actually harder, but, but the idea and- and, the, and we should say, we feel very lucky that we were given the honor of making this happen. I yeah. Mean, people have pr approached before and they have been denied and that for us it was like I guess the legacy of Smallville helped in terms of like finding a character that people don't, a chapter of a life that no one knows and, and 
telling that story. Yeah. So Smallville was our, our first show, and this is sort of feels like the next iteration of that. You know? I think there's probably some Smallville fans in here, myself included. <laughs> um, for you guys too, you know, you talked about the fact that there's Tim and Colleen and Danny Elfman who've all worked together, and then the two of you guys having such a shorthand. Do you feel like having those relationships really helped also to build the show and make that foundation that all these actors could jump off of so much more easily? Absolutely. Yeah, and, and yeah, it really was. And the fact that, you know, we got on with Tim immediately. So we also really clicked with him. And that was important. In terms and that was, yeah. Just, this is the longest production he's ever done. It was like nine months on the ground doing this and, and the, probably nine months of prep. So it was really, he, he, I think he felt confident and comfortable because we'd done it before and we're grown ups and we really respected his process. And he was incredibly respectful of the scripts as well. I mean, it all starts with the script. And I think we've never had better notes or fewer notes from a director ever, um, which was really, you know, it just, it just, it just was a great relationship and a great collaboration. I love that. Um, so when this does come out for people to see, what do you guys each hope that fans take away from and audiences take away from the show? We'll start from that end, so you, you, we, won't, we won't jump right to you first, Jenna. <laughs> Um, I hope that they're like they catch all the little details. I like that. Like when there's a, something that like not everyone sees right away. It, 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 maybe it's something in, you know in the costumes or the sets or in the story. Um, I, I hope that like that's what people sort of uh, that that's something that just keeps growing. And uh, and of course the whole thing, just everybody in it. But I, but starting with like little details, that's that's my hope. Well, I already, I'm already thinking about being Wednesday for Halloween, and I was like, I want to make thing, but he has to have all the stitching and like the dirty nails too. Like, <laughs> it can't just be a regular hand. Exactly. It's <laughs> not as guess? difficult as you would think. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think for, for me, I hope it's something that people can watch together as a family, because I don't think there are a lot of those shows that exist. You know that that everybody can sit around and watch together, and I think this is a show that they can. Yeah, I think that's for me, is important, that it's, it's, it's a show coming up before Thanksgiving, and it really feels like, it, even though it's, it's scary and somewhat gory, it actually has a real, and bizarrely for a Wednesday Adams show, it has a real heart, and I think is, is something that a family who are going through some troubles could really enjoy and bond over, and it's just, there's something for everyone, and it sounds like a cliche, but again, there really is something for everybody, and as Al said, I think there's so much, it's kind of a shitty world right now, and this, I think, we hope will bring joy and happiness and laughter. Um, what I love about this show, and what I've always loved about the Adams Family is that, um, and Tim's work, is about what it means to be an outsider. And what I really love about the show is that I hope people experiencing that feeling feel seen. There's so many different versions about what it means to be an outsider in the show, visually, but also from the perspective of the people inhabiting the characters, writing the scripts, making the costumes, creating the sets, directing it. I hope that people feel that kind of connection that I felt when I first watched The Addams Family and thought, this is me. I love that. Well, you guys know that November 23rd is a Wednesday. First of all, okay? That was not an accident, okay. I'm sure. That was by design. <laughs> and, um, you know, you're going to be entertained. It's a great it's a way to spend the night before you stuff yourself the next day. Um, but, man, just all the different characters that you're going to see. So many great, great actors, man. Just, just the sets, the story. You know, it's a continuation of a legacy that is the Adams Family and these characters. And you're going to see them in a different light, like you've never seen before. And you're going to welcome it. And you're going to be entertained. And lastly, I probably will be walking around with like 20 guys dressed like Gomez, because they can. <laughs> you know, that's going to happen. 
We'll meet on the corner of 27th Street and Lexington Avenue, okay? <laughs> About midnight. But you're gonna enjoy it, I promise you. It's been really interesting, um, and again, such an honor to be able to portray Wednesday at a different age. And as we mentioned earlier, you know, when, when a girl is 10 years old and she makes dark, uh, gory comments, it's innocent and charming because she's 10 and she, she doesn't know any better. There's a naive nature to it all. But to do that as a teenage girl, uh, you know, it's, it's um, you should know better. And there's, there's a, a respect that's expected of you and, and, and um, I don't know, maybe it's not as charming anymore, not as whatever. So it really was, it, it was a strong balance of, of finding, um, you know, how to keep someone so likable. But, to, but again, someone as Wednesday, someone who absolutely everybody, all generations, all whatever, they see themselves in Wednesday, they want to be Wednesday. And I think, I think that when you, you, you do see so many teen shows that are being put out there of, of the girl trying to please others and and still being very lost in herself and very confused, which is very relatable as well. And another reason why I appreciate the se this series is because we kind of explore that a little, a little bit because it's natural for a teenager with hormones running through her veins to, to be a bit lost and confused and be thrown in an environment where in order to get what she wants, she unfortunately has to make friends and relationships and <laughs> things like that. It's very off-putting for her and it's, and it's nice to see her in that tumble, but we've never spent so much time with her for, uh, before and putting an, an emotional arc to a character that essentially has no emotion was, was really interesting. But the, the community or passion that you see in a room like this, she's a creepy little freak. And <laughs> <laughs> but her, her impact is absolutely unpar uh, unparalleled. I've never seen a normal person bring a group together like this and create a family like this and create a legacy like this. And that's just a testament that we need weirdos in the world and, and they're what bring us, they're the what make the world go round. Um, so be weird, watch the show. <laughs> do, like do, do what you wanna do. I think, and another beautiful thing too about, about cinema and film is, is it should be reflective of what the real, real world is, but it, it, it's a break from reality. We want to go home and you know, leave our jobs and, and watch something that makes our brain turn off for a little bit and, and gives us adrenaline and makes us happy and makes us sad. And for a show like this that has such a wide variety of characters, it really does bring so much of emotion. That is the intention. And, and again, just sit back, enjoy the show, relate, don't relate. That's your business, not mine. Um, you heard her. I, I know, I know a lot, a lot of work went into this. I've never done something I don't, I don't think as demanding ever of myself in, in my career. And um, to be able to re release that into the world, I, I yes, I, I hope you get lost in it. Yes. Well, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our panelists for joining us today. And a thank you to all of you guys for joining us today. Um, I know you're going to get to spend a lot more time in the world of Wednesday on November 23rd, which is a Wednesday on Netflix. Um, but as we head out, what do you guys think about seeing that trailer one more time? Can we, can we maybe do a little snap to get them to play that trailer? How do you guys feel? Are you ready? Yeah. One, two.